In some cases, you may have a categorical variable and wish to test whether it is different from a theoretical distribution. This problem is almost the same as testing for an association among two categorical variables. It's called the chi-squared test for goodness of fit, and in this video I will explain how it works. The chi-squared test for goodness of fit is meant to compare an observed frequency distribution with a frequency distribution you expect on the basis of a theory. The null hypothesis is that the observed distribution doesn't differ from a theoretical one and the alternative hypothesis states that they do differ. The distributions that can be tested have to be discrete, but can concern variables of any measurement level, categorical, ordinal, as well as numerical. The test statistic is given by this formula, which calculates per category i the difference between observed and expected frequencies, squares the result, divides by the expected frequency, and then calculates the sum over all categories n. This test statistic follows a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. If the random variable were following the theoretical distribution, then a large value of the test statistic relative to the degrees of freedom would be a very unlikely outcome. So a large value of the test statistic is associated with a small p-value and leads to a rejection of the null hypothesis. A requirement for the application of the chi-squared statistic for goodness of fit is that for each category i, the expected frequencies need to be five or more. As you see, this test is almost identical to the chi-squared test for association. The only difference between the two is that the test for goodness of fit uses an expected distribution that is specified a priori whereas the test for association derives the expected distribution on the basis of the marginal distributions. Let's see how the goodness of fit test works by applying it to an example. We take a case where two dice are thrown 30 times. The null hypothesis for this experiment is that the observed distribution is not different from a theoretical one of two fair dice. Or stated briefly, the null hypothesis is that we have two fair dice, and the alternative hypothesis is then that the dice are not fair. The outcome of our experiment is shown here. And here is the theoretical probability distribution for the sum of two fair dice. If you multiply each value with 30, since we are considering the case where we have thrown 30 times, these are the expected frequencies for the two fair dice. As you see, only the expected frequency for getting the outcome of 7 is meeting the requirement in this test to have at least frequencies of 5 for each category. So, using the subdivisions into 11 categories is not possible using only 30 throws. But we can still apply the test by combining different outcomes. If you combine the outcomes of 2 up to 5 into one category, the outcomes of 6, 7 and 8 into another, and the outcomes higher than 8 into a third category, you get a distribution that does meet requirements. This is the observed frequency distribution for the aggregated categories, and here is the expected distribution. Now we can apply the equation to calculate the chi-squared test statistic. It turns out to have a value of 3.68 which corresponds to a p-value of 0.16. So we will not reject the null hypothesis that the two dice are fair. In a situation where you would not have a theoretical distribution, but rather two observed frequency distributions, let's say you had two pairs of dice and you would like to compare the distributions amongst these two pairs, you could throw 30 times with each pair and then create a frequency distribution of the three categories as before. Sometimes people then apply the equation of the chi-squared statistics by assuming that one of the two distributions represents the observed distribution and the other the theoretical distribution. But that's wrong. It underestimates the sampling variability which exists for both pairs of dice. The correct way to deal with this is to apply a test for association which is testing the same question as a test for goodness of fit if you have just two categories in one dimension. For our case of throwing with two pairs of dice, 
we could phrase the null hypothesis as the distribution you get is unrelated to the pair of dice you use. To conduct the test for the two pairs of dice, we would place the two distributions in a cross table, then calculate the marginal distributions, and on the basis of these marginal distributions calculate the expected frequencies for each cell. Applying the equation for the test statistic to this cross table, the chi-squared statistic turns out to be 3.8, with a p-value of 0.15. Let's also look how far off we would be if we would erroneously assume that the outcome of the second pair of dice would represent the expected distribution. We would then just apply this equation for the chi-squared statistic, and it would lead to a value of 6.7 and a p-value of 0.03. So you would then falsely reject the null hypothesis. I'd like to finish with a note about the applicability of this test. You have seen that it's possible to group outcomes of several categories of a frequency distribution in order to meet the requirements for the chi-squared test. You can also apply this grouping to continuous distributions and calculate counts per interval, like in a histogram. In this way, you can apply the chi-squared test for goodness of fit also to continuous random variables, and it has been widely used for this purpose. However, there are several alternative tests available to compare numerical variables with the theoretical distribution that are more powerful than a chi-square test. And the chi-square test is in general best suited for categorical variables. I hope you understood the following from this video. If you have one categorical variable with n classes and want to compare it to a theoretical distribution, the chi-square test can be used. The chi-square statistic then follows a chi-square distribution with n-1 degrees of freedom. Sometimes this test is used to compare an observed probability distribution with a theoretical distribution for which the probabilities are calculated over intervals. However, usually more powerful tests are available for this purpose.